we're here with Governor Michael Dukakis in the sunny campus of UCLA. And our first question for the governor is this. Um, what can we all learn from President Obama's historic victory? Well, from a political standpoint, it's the value of precinct-based grassroots organizing, something that uh, neither political party has been doing very well, that I didn't do as well as I should have in 1988. If uh, there's a lesson to be learned politically from this campaign, it is that old-fashioned, precinct-based, door-to-door, neighborhood-to-neighborhood campaigning works, even at the presidential level. And for young people in particular that are thinking of going into politics, I hope they've learned a lesson. I hope we've all learned a lesson. I hope my party has learned a lesson. Hmm. So that as we look at 2010, critically important election, where there will be a number of open Senate seats, and we're winning just three or four of them could end this really disgraceful use of the filibuster in the United States Senate. Uh, it's that grassroots effort supported and reinforced with new technology, the Internet, a variety of other things, that really can make a difference. Now, what role do you think, you know, was played by money in this sense? A lot of people were giving $5, $10 to Obama. How valuable do you think that was? There's nothing better for a candidate than to raise his money from a very broad base of mm -hmm. relatively moderate contributors. Why? Because it means you owe nothing to anybody. You can be completely independent. Those folks aren't giving you the money because they think they can influence you in some special way. And Obama, to his credit, was very tough on contributions generally, on lobbyist contributions, on lobbyist fundraising, all of that kind of stuff. And he probably comes to the White House with more independence mm. in a real, very real sense than any president I can remember for a long time. And a lot of it had to do with the way he raised his funds. Now, that kind of fundraising has another benefit, an important benefit. And that is that as those small contributions come in, you want to turn those folks into precinct workers mm. immediately. And he had four million four million individual contributors. I set the record in 1988, 20 years ago, with 400,000. He had four million. Mm. Now, there are only 200,000 precincts in the entire United States, and you have four million contributors. I mean, what a pool of potential precinct captains and block captains in that four million person pool of contributors, many of whom contributed five, 10, 50, maybe 100. The average contribution was $80. Uh, there's nothing better than that. Another important lesson for people to learn, and young people in particular, you do not have to be uh, money bags or have to sell your soul to special interests to run and win elections. That, too, is something that I think is an important lesson from this campaign. Oh, thank you for sharing your insight there. Now, one of your true passions has been transportation. You, you were chair of the Amtrak board a few years back. And what opportunity do you think presents itself now with the Obama administration? I'm very excited about this. This is the first administration we've had in my lifetime that uh, is serious about investing in excellent public transportation and a first-class national high-speed rail passenger system. And uh, the $8 billion that have been included in the stimulus package, as well as additional funds that the President is calling for in his budget, really represent the first time that we've had that kind of commitment. Now it's up to us to go to work and do the planning and engineering, which has not been done, and the building of this system. I like to call it the steel interstate. We should be developing, planning, and building an interstate high-speed rail system every bit as good as the interstate highway system. And frankly, the interstate highway system won't work unless we have a rail passenger system. As anybody, quite frankly, in the metropolitan Los Angeles area knows every day as you're trying to navigate these freeways. So it's a great opportunity, but uh, we have a lot to do. We're way behind. We're out of practice. It's embarrassing to go to Europe and Asia and ride those high-speed trains and then come back here. And uh, not only that, but we can't seem to do the work and do it within a relatively reasonable period of time. Uh, we can't make a train. We can't make a transit car. We don't make streetcars. Uh, we've lost the capacity to do that. So it's a huge opportunity. And I am 
delighted that the president has made this commitment. Now we've got to go to work with him and with the Congress and the new administration and make it happen. Any um, last words of advice you would have for the new president? Well, he knows a lot more about winning the presidency than I do, and I have a lot of respect for him. Uh, I think he's off to an excellent start. Obviously, he's uh, inherited a mess economically and otherwise, but um, that's why you run to uh, straighten out this stuff and, and to get this country back. I like what he and the new Secretary of State are doing internationally. We're actually reaching out and talking to people. We understand that uh, American foreign policy can no longer be a my way or the highway mm. situation. This is a multipolar world. Uh, we're not the world's policemen, uh, nor are the Russians. I mean, those days are gone forever, but that doesn't mean that we can't exercise thoughtful and enlightened leadership. And we need to do both. We both need to get our economy back on track and, and do that. But um, uh, he's doing a fine job. Uh, he's, in a remarkable way, almost looks as if he belonged there from day one. And this is not an easy job. This is the toughest job you'll ever have to do in politics. So I'm very pleased. I think if he continues to do what he's doing, uh, reaches out. Uh, I would hope that the opposition party, quite frankly, in the Congress would uh, begin to get serious about bipartisan cooperation. Uh, the use of the filibuster day after day after day to require 60 votes to pass anything in the Senate is really outrageous. I think it's unconstitutional, to tell you the truth, but uh, uh, it's very irresponsible. And uh, my hope is that in 2010 the Democrats will win a f sufficient number of Senate seats, and it's only going to take one or two more so that they can end this filibuster rule, which, by the way, in fairness, we've abused too, and make it possible for a majority of the Senate, after reasonable debate, to act. It's just very important, very important to the President, very important to the country. Thank you, Governor Michael okay. Dukakis.